Well, hello everybody. I um, am Mara Carranza of Amlo Bishop, and today I had a request to translate um, Este Soy, which is the documentary about Amlo, uh, his beginning years and so forth. Um, I haven't uh, uh, asked for permission, but I'm sure that it should be okay. If it's not, I guess they'll take it off. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and translate it. And um, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, go to my channel, Amlovision, and um, help me out because I'm trying to help with the trans uh, fourth transformation of Mexico. And uh, I've been uh, watching Amlo, and so. I decided to translate it so that English-speaking public uh, could also learn about AMLO. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start the video, and uh, I'm going to translate to the best of my ability. I may have to stop it at times um, and, you know, make comments if that's okay with you. Oh wow, where is it? Oh, I guess I've got to put on the display. <laughs> now this guy works every single day. I don't think he's taken a day off since he started because he wants to set everything in place. That's the palace. And that's where he's headed. Or to La Chingada. To Palenque, Chiapas. But he thinks it's going to be Palacio because the people want that there be a change, a true change. And that's what we're going to be uh, uh, dealing with people starting the uh, December uh, the 1st of 2018 to help the people of Mexico. I am from this town, from a family that was commercial, um, and I'm very proud. This house that's abandoned used to belong to my grandfather, Jose Obrador Revuelta. He had uh, male children and female children. Among the female, my mother, Manuela, Manuelita Obrador, she embarked into a cayuca and she used to get in the water and she used to go, she used to sell merchandise on all the uh, sides of the road and she would sometimes go two times uh, for two days um, with merchandise and when she met the father she convinced him that they should open a store. And so he's a friend of his from there. They, they were owners and they continue to be owners of that area next to him. Where the town ends, the, their um, ranch begins where this town ends. But we used to go bathe in there. In <laughs> All of us, from 3 in the afternoon, and my mother had her little store over here, and then when it was about 6 or 7, she would stand at her door, and she used to yell, Andres Manuel, Jose Ramon, and then, and we were uh, bathing. And so we'd say, take off, go, let's go home. So then I went to study second uh, or high school, and then I went to prep in Villahermosa. So I'm going to go show you the home. And that's his wife and his son. So this used to be my home. This is where I grew up in Tepetlán, Macustana, Tabasco. Chule. Oh, and she's very happy to see him. And may God take care of you and bless you. We're with you. And he says, thank you. 
and I won't forget. They said, don't forget us when you go to the palace. <laughs> when I was uh, chief of government of the city of Mexico, the, they say that power, when there is no convictions and no principles, it makes you stupid, the, the intelligent ones. And the dumb ones, he makes them, it makes them crazy. But I know I am well anchored and my feet are on the ground and I am never going to change. That's what I value most of my life, my honesty and my authenticity. And that's how I will continue. I'm very proud and at the same time that my paternal grandparents they're from this area Coalapan these are my origins I am mestizo with lots of pride I lived as a young child in the town of Palenque and I used to walk through here and I climbed on, in one occasion to that mountain to the point of that mountain it's an observatory, and it was not permitted, and I'm glad it's uh, permitted to exist. We are what we are. We have not been disintegrated with our cultures. That's why we have been able to resist epidemics, and earthquakes, and bad situations due to our culture. What I want to do is take advantage of this strong uh, culture that exists in our culture. And, I, and it's sad that, that, that the old Maya, and that it's margined, it's forgotten. Wow, it's gorgeous. Oh, I want to go there. So it was abandoned, but there is potential there for knowledge, for getting to know, for a knowledge that's astronomical. They, they know when you to plant. Not anybody knows. I want to recover all these knowledge um, so that we can learn to be uh, self-sufficient and to bring our, our own, um, uh, what does he say, our uh, corn and good natural uh, corn. And we, uh, we gather up the people that's been margined, that, have, that never has been taken into account. So here, I used to walk in, in 1973, and I studied political science thanks to a grant that I had. With, we had 80 students, and they gave us um, a shelter and food. When I wasn't, my mother thought I wasn't studying, and so my mother came to make sure. And she all of a sudden showed up in my classes, or started at the window saying, and I turn, and I come out rapidly, because, you know, the youth, if a parent come, they make, they are embarrassed. So I came out, and I came with my mother here, and we sat, and I hugged him with all my love. And then she realized I was studying. And that's a good thing because that was a miracle because the students with uh, uh, a few shortage of resources, it's very hard for them to finish. And now, in a silent way, or silent way, they, there's a lot of people that don't have the money to study. The, the education is not a, uh, oh, it's a right, it's not a privilege. 
the youth, youth that uh, they canceled their future. They just named them meanies that neither do they study nor do they work, like if it was their fault that they took away their opportunities. We have to pull on to our side the youth, otherwise we won't be able to stop delinquency because they will grab them. If the president is honest, the governors will have to be honest as well. Oh, wow. There will come a time that there will be growth in the economy and they will require uh, qualified uh, workers and so we're going to develop Mexico so that there will be enough and to make them uh, able to work. All of this used to be like a, uh, what do you call it, like a word? Uh, where you, <laughs> uh, what do they say, where, where you can sink in? And this is where I learned how to work in the, in the fields of the community. I am very proud of that. Like these people, Mayas Chontal, <laughs> with the, um, I hope, are you guys hearing? Oh my God, this may be too low. So, um, it was about like 40 hectares. No, uh, maybe 60. Uh, land and uh, uh, water. It's a canal. And so we want to give water to the Mojarra. So you don't remember me anymore? You don't recognize me? Yes, I do. No, he says my, my side is not so good anymore. They operated me on that one, but now I'm waiting for them. I have cataract. Oh, attorney. <laughs> no, we're going to continue the struggle. At that time, in those times, there came a program that was integral in all the uh, area uh, Chantai. There was also credits to your word. They bought ranches and uh, lands and they gave it to the people. These lands were given to the people, the poor people that lived in this area, and they, they were margined off. But in the lowest zones, in the poorest areas, and they made of dwellings. Oh, look at that. Look at the wood he's carrying on that bike. So he said, I'm here visiting you. Look here. That's my little <laughs> sprout. Ernesto? Jesus Ernesto? And I brought him so he could recognize or know all the places here. And uh, we still continue to fish and do all the same stuff. How have you been? Oh, so it looks like he knows all these people. Simon, I'm here visiting. This, this is a, a plains that are at the level sea level, and it's a low area. So sometimes water comes in. So this uh, work is to make it deeper so that when the water comes, it makes channels. And what you get out from the bottom, you bring it up, and then it, and then it fills the water. And so then this area will not uh, uh, get drowned or, you know, it will not sink in. Swamp, the word I was looking for was swamp. 
So just like we shouldn't buy uh, gasoline, we should be self-sufficient. And we shouldn't have to buy the beans, rice, milk. Everything should be and get jobs, rescue the, the field, so that there'll be integration with the families, so that they won't have migration due to necessity, so that if they go, it'll be because they want to. But instead of uh, moving migration, we're going to stay, stay here. If you want to, if you want to work, well, you can stay here. And you know what I learned? What democracy in indigenous is consensus. One represents all. And he expresses what all the people are feeling. These agreements are fundamental. Here there's no opposition. There's, they have consensus. They, and when we do it, I will ask the people and I don't want to do anything if the people don't agree. That's the true happiness, to give your give a hand to those that need it. Give a hand to the that's fallen back and bring them equal with you so that you can walk together. One of the best times of my life was here in this central area. This is a man I admire, a great poet, uh, agua, uh, water of Tabasco, I am. water of Tabasco, I am. and this is why I am here. Okay, it's a beautiful poem. So let's go to where I lived. So this is in 77 and 78, I lived here till 82. I lived here with my uh, first wife, Rocio. And here, my, the oldest of my sons, Jesus Ramon, lived, was born here. He talked about how he his struggle was. So this is where he crossed the border of the Cajuca. Here in 1955, the indigenous movement, they claimed because Pemex was contaminating the water, the land, the air. And so I told the operative, what's the order that you have? What the order was to block, to prohibit that they so we started singing the national hymn there he is as a young man oh and looks like they attacked him oh my gosh oh wow that's one of the decisions that one takes in life and I am not ashamed of it because it's to act of conviction and in a pacific or peaceful way. Never has there been a, a death in one of our meetings that we maintain. And look here that I am asking you something today that we have been attacked. A person can put their life in but you should not put other people's lives at risk. They came and they threw gases at the people and they threw lots of bullets and some this way and some that way. We ran every direction. All the group is the same. Let's go. It's a man that's fought a lot for the community. He used to work here. He used to help a lot of the elderly, especially the people from the fields. And he even helped them with homes. And at that time, and that's why the people follows him. Because he cares about the ones on the bottom. I came through here walking about 26 years ago because they didn't want to respect us at the beginning of Cárdenas, Tabasco and so we had to walk from Villahermosa to the city of Mexico it was done by three groups the Democrats and the mystics 
that it was like a pilgrimage. Some rebels, these poor people. So since that time, but you did two exoduses. Yeah, but I'm talking about the first one. But the second one was the same through here. And the other one was in 1994. Because they did a fraud. See, this is where the, this was the scene of one of the great movements of a cultural and religious place. This is a house of, uh, I've slept here for months. I've done acts, manifestations. And then the attorney named Yenos, in this, uh, they were full in this, uh, plaza. And they're telling him, you are not alone. They're chanting, you are not alone. trying to jail him, giving him so I'm, he was, so that he's talking on the case against him. So in this country of impunity, so they're going to incarcerate me and they're going to take away my rights because, because I wanted to open a road to let someone get to a hospital. But I am, I am sure that this is unjust and that it's not, it's because of my way of acting and because I want to represent the people and the future of our people. So as you can suppose, I'm accustomed and I don't accept injustices easily and I plan to that people that believe in justice and liberty and I will take no one to be confronted. Anything that we do will be written in, in a peaceful uh, and and the end, as you know, you've received your orders of your parties, and you're going to act and consignment officially, even though it's unpopular. You guys are going to judge me that you neither may the dignity of the people live. Look at that man, he had a uh, wet tape. Oh my gosh. I had already a clear idea that they were going to vote for putting me in jail. It was a combined rage and sadness because the three in the back, they voted. They, they're traitors again and they're hating on the government. They need to all be sent to jail. They don't want their candidate, their brother, to be going to jail. We will fight until the end. 
democracy has died. And yes, they're, they're injuring the most sacred thing of our patriots is our uh, democracy, our rights. My goodness, you guys, I'm sorry. These things. The people took me up because the people is very strong. The people of Mexico are very solidarity uh, fraternal. The people is uh, most conscientious. And that's, uh, I've only seen solidarity in Mexico in the indigenous peoples. And this, even though this is, a lot of people work here and fast, and they're involved in their own mind, but when it comes to, to support a just cause, the people manifest. Oh, look at that. Boy, they sure did manifest. Look at that. <laughs> wow. This is impressive. I can't believe I missed all of this. See, none of this was in the news over here. I didn't know anything of, of this when it was happening. So they rectified their adversaries that they need to change their attitude. On our part, we will always will have an attitude that's frank and generous and responsible. We are going to continue to fight in a peaceful manner and we will have confidence and that our cause is just and it will triumph. In these last few days, I've received lots of acts of support and solidarity from you, of workers, of housewives and indigenous workers, commercial people, the intellectuals, artists, every every person in the town and that's why i repeat again with all my heart i love you without without um, containment so there was lots of years of struggle and protests manifestations in, in defense of the petroleum, in, in defense of rights, democracy. When I came into this place, the first thing I did was open this window and come to this uh, balcony so I would not forget that that Sokano had been many times protesting so that I won't forget where I came from. My three children, Jesus and Yeti, they back me, they support me. Um, there's sometimes they know that I hardly, I don't get to be with them a lot, but we, the second is Andres, Gonzalo is the third from my first marriage. And Jesus, my, my youngest, with Beatriz. And they all get along really well. They critique that in this home there lives a, a, a totalitarian integral. <laughs> Populist <laughs> <laughs> I am so intolerant that that 
Normal y todo. He decided to go to America. Those things in the time. He said no. En Tabasco, de niño nos tocó, in Tabasco, eh, as a children, we suffered because my fa no father founded the opposition. Juniors. We're not like Abusivos. these juniors that are abusive. No we're not going to no take part of the being of government. We don't want to be part of nepotism. It's another problem with nepotism. I think it's important as an activity to transform, but in the personal way, I would not devote myself to, not even remotely. In my way of seeing people in power, not as untouchable, like that has those hundred uh, uh, bodyguards, but he, it's more like somebody that's like a common man, and he's gonna, he says he's going to go into power like an equal, because power is, yeah, so says, these family members, their wives, fathers, people that take public posts of importance, they take sometimes right that they haven't won with with their family members. My counsel is that, or advice that I've given to my children, whom I love so dearly, in our talks, that are circular dialogues with the others, as the beloved one. I always tell them that then to stay away from materialism. I would like to continue having coffee and to be able to walk on the street. So there's no um, first lady in this country. We're all first names because we all have a value. One thing, all of us are valuable and part of the family. Sometimes the woman is the one that has to head the family and has to bring her children because maybe the husband no longer exists or he left her. Yeah. So there's no second place, third place. They're all first days. What the writer most re desires in his life is to be read. I would love for people to read my books. Oh, when someone says, oh, I read this book and I loved it. It's wonderful because when I was writing it, that's how I feel like I was thinking of you when I was writing it. So she's uh, doing a book signing. Apparently she's a writer. It requires to conceptualize of what's happening as of your understanding, historical and cultural. And she helps me a lot. She's She's the critique, uh, she does her critiques, that fame, that I don't listen, and that I'm messianic, and totalitarian, and all that. If you, they know Beatriz, they know it ain't, so. Nos dicen que quiere hacer, so he tells us what he wants to do. So this is the other side of Mexico, the profound Mexico, the deep Mexico. We're running a straight line from the Zócalo, right in the city of Mexico. It's still part of the same scene. Of the old forgotten people, as if though time had not uh, moved, as if though we were lost in, in time, like it had not moved, anchored in time. Chimalhuacan, 800,000 800, inhabitants. 6 in uh, de los Paz, 800 inhabitants. More than 2 million inhabitants in Ectapteket. So all of this, that is all this ur urban zone, 
There's millions of Mexican people living in precarious conditions. This municipality, as a long time, has been governed by the PRI with a corporation. And that makes it harder, this situation, because they, they continue to co be conditioned with public services. The programs should be given to the benefit of all the citizens. To if the, when the, our movement tries, we have to attend to all the, uh, all the margin and popular areas in the urban areas of our country. That is this, what they lack is material things, but they're they have a lot of fraternity. They feel unsafe because you can't go outside because they'll attack you. And talking about that, women, when you walk through these areas, you don't feel safe. They, you can't wear something that you might wear a dress or something because you might be attacked. Because people have arms. We are all, we all want something good, and we are conscious that there's a lot of things that we need, and we struggle so that we can, can have a future, a better Mexico. All the young people are, we're going to bring Mexico forward. And so would you like to reunite re here? I would like to make an invitation to Peña Nieto to live in one day, or I'm sorry, one month in this area. See if he would be able to do it, because the majority of the community has a scarce economy because they can't even give their children education. We have lived every, every uh, area that has like scarcity of good, but we want access to education, uh, access to jobs and a state of rights and uh, access to health. And we don't want our families that if we go to a hospital, there's the areas that are inhumane that we have to wait and we have to sleep outside the hospital to try to get in. In the signal, uh, I want us to be very tranquil because there's so many things that have been seen. We cannot go outside of our house because they'll take away your purse or your cell phone. Can you make sure and you give a hand to all these people that are humble? Because it's so hard to come up and walk through there and no water, no drainage. And it's hard for them to, to even, um, there are no roads, they can't even get to their jobs. The poverty is not uh, due to destiny or because it's casual. I believe it's due to corruption and bad government. So they're saying the people being ignorant is not good. You can see the strength of Mexico because they move in support. If Mexico, it can lift itself up as, as an organized society. And the people are the ones that need to uh, uh, tell the government what to do, not the government tell the people what to do. We know that we want education. We don't want we don't want uh, money, we want work and education. So that is what I'm going to commit, that all the people of, uh, uh, <coughs> are <laughs> the, the ones that are, that they will give work, they will let them train, that we will give you jobs, we'll give you grants, so that you can be able to go. No. So they're gonna, he says, don't think that I'm the same as the others, as the uh, corrupt politicians. Only to tell you 
that I've been at this 40 years struggling for the poor people. And until I die, I will continue to fight for the support. And sometimes we feel like crying. And it, <laughs> when Salinas, uh, he, he gave his plant to Ferdinand, a friend of his, a Salinas de Gortari's friend. And Ancira, he didn't really, he didn't really want to produce fertilizer, and he let it convert into a, like a piece of junk. And and then uh, Peña Nieto came in, and in 2014, he bought it, and it, it, maybe it was 50 million, and they paid for it, totally, that was destroyed, 500 million dollars, and besides that, they're investing 500 million to rehabilitate it, but now, but it's already cost the people that money that's all for all the people that's one billion dollars it's a thousand million dollars Salinas and Peña Nieto via some intermediaries this is the principal problem of Mexico corruption and that's what we're going to end we're going to end with these businesses, these juicy businesses that they take the money of the public money, and it costs the people a lot. That's why we can't go and get ahead. In 10 years, Odebrecht received contracts besides concessions from Penix, more than $5,000 million with influentialism. He didn't even pay any money. And it came to such the influence and, and Calderon's time and uh, this association. So the administration of uh, uh, Bridge, El Buen en Los Pinos, it, they convinced the people that, that we should uh, do procedures that are ethical for businessmen and, of course, the government of Mexico. The Southeast requires special attention. It's a uh, abandoned region. It's the, the Pacific is on this side, Salina Cruz, and there's the Gulf. We're in the port of Coatzacoalco. These ports were made at the same time as they uh, made a uh, a uh, railway. It's about 300 kilometers. One of the projects that we're going to impulse or encourage is to make this corridor. We're going to modernize it, these 300 kilometers. And we're going to construct a new uh, a container railway. It's a strategic zone because it's like the Panama Canal. We're going to, in uh, 300 kilometers, we're going to give incentives so they can install businesses, armories, so that they won't have to take the merchandise from Asia to the U.S., but build it here so they can build, uh, have companies to build things, and electricity will be less. We're going to lower taxes with a purpose that we can generate lots of jobs. And this will be 
this, this will be the south, southeast of the east so that workers of Chiapas, Tabasco, Capeche, and Veracruz and Oaxaca, they won't have to go, to go look for jobs in, in the U.S. They won't do anything without, without the consent of the people, the inhabitants, the indigenous, and the uh, people of this region. We will not impose anything. They're going to like it. They're going to participate because you're not going to buy the land. We're going to let them form part of a, um, like they're going to be like a company. They're going to work with public participation and, and with a public sector. Are, they're all going to participate together. We're in uh, Dos Bocas, Paraíso, Tabasco. This is where people go out and we're buying 500,000 barrels a day. And we use 800,000 barrels a day in this country. We only produce 300,000 barrels. But in exchange, we're going to build a new refinery and it's going to be done in three years at the most and we will have the resources because we will not permit corruption and we're going to save and of course there's not going to be luxury in the government don't, don't think that the Petitlan is very far from New York before when they didn't have uh, trains in the roads. Communication used to do it by boat. And if you live near the water, you live near the world. Because it has a majestic uh, river which drops into the Gulf of Mexico. So it had a communication with Cuba, New York, and, and also with Europe. So when you're here in New York, don't think that it scares me. All towns have much history. They still had uh, uh, buffaloes in New York, and in Mexico they had universities. I say it with all respect. We have to talk with investors so that they won't be scared. We're telling them that the change will consist fundamentally of ending corruption. And that's the principal problem of Mexico. There will be microeconomic equilibrium and we'll be respectful of autonomy of the bank of Mexico, we will not increase uh, taxes in real terms, we will not uh, get debt for the country, and we'll get zero deficit with zero corruption. Just like they're looking for legitimate activity, we're looking for the next president uh, want uh, attending the preferential so that the country will do well. We will not allow that they, that if you get benefits at the cost of the people of the people of Mexico. So we're going to have a, a relation of respect with Donald Trump but not subordination. And we're going to convince them that we need a relationship that is brotherly. So if there's growth in Mexico and work in Mexico, it will reduce the migratory ph phenomenon and it will control the migration and it will stop violence without the need to use any force. If there's jobs, then we're going to have development and that's what we're going to use uh, in this meeting with the United States. I used to come here when I was constructing every morning to supervise the second floor 
in the city of Mexico, there was a problem, serious, because the same street, and the, there's too many uh, streets, <laughs> and it's hard to travel, because you would have to uh, uh, go through big new roads, you would have to, so there was a lot of uh, stays, so the option that we found was to utilize, to move up. So that's how we constructed this second floor with our own uh, savings. And we didn't uh, get into debt. The, the, in my time, those uh, second uh, levels cost the... Uh, during the Calderon's time, he stole a lot of money. But so Miguel Mancera was when we still didn't have bad relations. He looked for me that OHL wanted to buy this part that we constructed so that, so that the whole second floor would have to be paid for. And they offered 650 million pesos, which would be utilized in, in the works, public works. And I told them no, that that would not be done, permitted. And so, so, so there exists from where the flag is, it's public. And from over there, to from the flag to here, it's private and so they charge to use the road. So now the citizens pay uh, taxes. Why are they going to still have to pay for the roads? If they're already paying, they, the government has the resources to make the works. So besides those, those taxes could be used to make, to do other works. And why would you still have to pay? That's privatization also when it has to do with public works. I do consider a good government that attended people and they did a lot for uh, social development. The formula that we use in the city of Mexico consists of not permitting corruption and governing with austerity and utilize the whole budget to the benefit of the people. That's what we're going to apply when I triumph in our movement on a national level. I've already got it very clear. I know how it needs to be done. So the building those large uh, columns so this is the structure so this is a work that's pharaoh that is estimated initially 200 million dollars but we're not in conditions to waste to invest so much money for something to resolve a problem that we could attend to in a different way. They, they decided and uh, they decide to make this airport when they have an option of making two new uh, runways in the military airport of Santa Lucia as opposed to this land in Santa Lucia there's there over there there's firm land here they refilled the lake they have they want to close two airports in order to make this one they want to close the actual airport and the other airport in order they would there would be interference in the air so two airports with everything that's already been invested so if we cancel this work we're not going to cancel the contracts with the companies. We'll come to an arrangement so that the same amount of work that is being done here will take it in the other place in Santa Lucia and we'll resolve the problem. Besides, we won't have the problem that it sinks 
because yes, it's going to be a lot of money to, to try and keep filling this lake. It was the Lake of Texcoco. It's not only what it's going to cost to try and, but imagine what it's going to cost in maintenance. We have the accessory, and you know they've constructed more in this area. This is Rio Bomar. He's the engineer. And in some cases, here it, they say, okay, it goes down a meter and a meter uh, with 20 centimeters. So it goes down every year a meter. That's three feet. Wow. So they want to put three railways. I'm sorry. Yes, so they could just use the other ones that already exist. So they wanted to put three new ones in, but they could put two more in the other one instead of three. That would help the uh, transit for the air farms, uh, for the overloading. And it would continue to save the infrastructure that is already there and exists. This is offensive, spending money like this. The seismic uh, control, they have to, so, so the people are sleeping on the street. We need to construct hospitals, schools, roads. Um, bridges. We have to support the people that have lost their homes. Where's the money going to come to support this plan of reconstruction of the people? It's a waste. All this is influentialism and corruption. And we cannot tolerate this. Our children would not forgive us. So don't cut us with the same uh, scissors. We're not all the same. So in the election of 2018 will be more than just an election for the people. It's a referendum, a consult, and we're going to ask the people, do you want more of the same? Or you want to change. But if the people vote for a change on the next day of the trial, I will be knocking on the doors to let them know this matter needs to be fixed. And we appreciate your attitude. Thank you. In the actual circumstances, the most important thing is to fight, to change the regiment. And that's what my party is doing. It's a position that's political that takes care of the society. And it was, it was a good decision to create Morena and to be careful that um, you because they took power for the sake of power. The mafia of the power was convenient for them to debilitate the country with the idea that, that we're all the same and that we're all equal. And the less that we participate, the better for them. When more than 60% vote, then the, the uh, mafia cannot win. So what are we offering? What democracy? That there not be frauds. That they respect the uh, the people's uh, wishes and to be respectful of, of the people and for women to also work in every area. When I was chief of governor of the 12 members of the cabinet, eight were women. Morena has won 
the last elections in Mexico. And, and it has to do with a government that was integral in uh, the uh, city of Mexico. And we're free and we're going to do what the people want, not what's convenient for the groups of uh, created interest groups. So that's what our adversaries don't like. Because it's uh, got to do with components and comprehension. Taking away the whole party thing, logic, or concept, or authority. What's required is two things. Being honest and have good sentiment. The corrupt is not at the left. And the one who gives his back or turns his back, the one that's suffering, he's not from the left. Point. This is period. This is moments of glory. It doesn't happen always. It's a great opportunity. It's a, a moment of, uh, to be able to participate to transform Mexico. I've been going from town to town and I don't rest. Or he doesn't rest. No, because what feeds me is the enthusiasm of the people. If you stop fighting, it's to start dying. That strengthens that the people not lose the faith, even though things are difficult. So we're going to go to Los Pinos. So he's saying, don't forget what I said. He said that the chief of the mafia is actually in Los Pinos. He's the guy from, uh, he's the one from Los Pinos. He's the worst <laughs> of the mafia. I can travel through all the country uh, and people that are living in difficult times. Uh, there's areas that are controlled completely by delinquency. I can enter those areas because we are doing good. And he who struggles for justice has nothing to fear. That's why I can go through Mexico without a, a bodyguard. Because the protection is, is this, this uh, it doesn't have any link. <laughs> and we go alone, just me and him. He go this extraordinary man, because he gives me lots of security. He uh, guards very well. And Caesar. He knows everything. He's a communicator of society for Morena. Besides that, he is an accessory, a, con a council, secretary, particular secretary, because he's sometimes in the office. But it's a great uh, apparatus. Of it's just the three of us, but it's very few. So violence because happened because they stopped working, because they disattended the youth. So now we need to start by attending the causes. Peace and tranquility are fruits of justice. So you can, uh, it's been observed what they've done to try to turn off uh, fire with fire. Uh, they've used brute force, forcitive measures, marines, soldiers, jails, severe laws. That's not function. It's been demonstrated every day. As I said when I was 
uh, chief of governor from Mexico. As of early in the morning, six in the morning, I go to head the committee of security. In the cabinet of security, I will have every day uh, to my side, Secretary of Defense and Marine and Health and Public Safety. It hasn't functioned that uh, se public security be, um, la de be given ha to the uh, total governing, uh, they've dinero, stolen the money, eh, no, eh, no. Es eso. That's not what we are going to do. No voy a we are not going to, I am not going to delegate this function that it's very important Vamos for the Mexican people. Cabo, de la Besides profound politics de social, of development, social development, uno, we're going to have modificar, eh, ley. no ya laws are going to be mo único, modified. Que lo ejerce, what si no hay vacío, the Constitution has already made but whoever, so who exercises it, the executive. So the president is also the executive force, the military. So we're going to use the Marines and uh, we're going to make a National Guard. Right now it's a disaster because the corp, everybody does what they want. So on one side it's the Marines. The army, the police, no it's not going to be like that. We're going to integrate them. And in a coordinated manner, and we're going to act. And that's why I'm talking of the National Guard. And you don't need a constitutional reform because it's already constituted. We should not become accustomed to violence. It makes my heart happy to know that there's, oh, it, it hurts my heart that there's 74 homicides daily. There's going to be lots of attention to youth, men, women, elderly, and especially women, that there not be these horrible uh, uh, feminicides that are extended throughout the whole country, and we're going to protect also the uh, uh, newspaper people so they can exercise with liberty their right to inform. There's going to be a commission to, to know what's actually happening or related to the disappearance of 43 of Yochinapa. It is not acceptable, the version, the official version. We're going to reconstruct the acts and we're going to figure it out what the truth is. That's a commitment I'm making for the parents of the youth that were that disappeared in Iguala. And those that are looking for their family members that have disappeared, thousands, because Calderón and Peña converted the country in a cemetery. We're going to confront this painful problem, the national. Let's go, or else we're not going to get there in time. <laughs> Regarding La politics and domino, indecision, indecision is que, a problem. Este, you, you need to go forward, bien. always forward. Yo creo que I believe that domino, politics is de to be defined. It ended. It's all ended. It's all ended. No, it's all ended. 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 It's uh, six, uh, everybody got a Hector, and because I was the oldest, I got the house. And, and so we go to, that's the name of it, La Chingada. Why? Why did they call it La Chingada? 
dirigente zapatista. It's a it's the director of the Zapatista group. After the revolution, one came to this Rachito and he named it that. So he says, where are you going? And he would say, I'm going to La Chingada. And so he named it that. Nobody knew that. No, that was because of Genovevo. I need some time for reflection and take distance from things. And when I can, I come here. This is the best place where I can become strengthened spiritually in this place it's quiet alone with my reflection I take a couple of uh, three uh, uh, rounds around the place plus my routine that per the doctor I have to walk in the afternoon two or three times and I look the fruit I talk with the trees in a good sense. I'll show you a cedar that's very big. It's about 80 or 100 years old. It's huge. It's majestic. Aquí los verdes se amotinan, el calor de la canícula enciende las pasiones de los hombres, o sea, aquí hablamos fuerte, gritamos. El problema que tenemos como políticos es precisamente eso, ¿no? Yeah, we don't talk strong, we have a good temperament. Hay que aprender a equilibrar razón con pasión. Lo he logrado, sí, atemperar mi pasión, autolimitarme. Self-limiting. Todo por la lucha, aunque Everything las grandes transformaciones se hacen uh, con fight. Este es el plan All B. the greatest transformations have been done with passion. A fondo What we are applying que no nos quede ningún remordimiento de conciencia que no quede por nosotros y que voy a luchar toda mi vida hasta que no era por mis ideales y por mis principios pero no voy a ser un candidato por nada I will burn my my boat because there's two roads. To Palacio, to apply myself for six years into transform Mexico. You can have confidence in that. We will gain the rebirth of Mexico. We're going to make history. We will not. We have three principles that guide us: not to lie, not to steal. Okay, I'm sorry. I have confidence. Um, he says, I will not, um, what's the word for traición? Um, I will not be a traitor. I will not do traitorous acts. Um, and you have, can have confidence. So, to Palacio, so I can transform, to make history? Or to La Chingada, <laughs> which is where he's at right now. So this is his wife singing. Para nacer de mí con o pedazos, para salvarme entre únicos en pares, para hacer de mi lugar en su parnaso, para darme un rinconcito en sus altares. Me vienen a convidar a arrepentirme. Me vienen a convidar a que no pierda. Me vienen a convidar a indefinirme. Me vienen a convidar a tanta mierda. Yo no sé lo que es el destino. Caminando fui lo que fui. Ay, adiós, ¿qué será? I don't want to interrupt her singing. Yo me muero como viví. Yo me muero. That part says, I will die like I lived. He looks like a proud man, proud of his wife. And it looks like he loves her voice. Quiero ser a la zurda más que diestro. Yo quiero hacer un congreso del unido. 
Yo quiero rezar a fondo un hijo nuestro. Dirán que pasó de moda la locura. Dirán que la gente es mala y no merece. A Dios partiré soñando travesuras. ¿Acaso multiplicar panes y peces? Yo no sé lo que es el destino. Caminando fui lo que fui. Ay, adiós. Yo me muero como viví, yo me muero como viví, wow. yo me muero como viví. Esto es, es para no cansarse. Porque si nos cansamos, no vamos a lograr nada. Entonces, la perseverancia se parece a la ansiedad. Cuando es para una cosa negativa, no te sirve de nada. Cuando la ansiedad es para construir un mundo mejor, una mejor familia, una mejor persona, hay que ser muy necesarios, sin duda. You have to be very stubborn, without a doubt. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to go ahead and leave the... Uh, 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 the, you know, like who who did what because they deserve, you know, the production, uh, colorista, assistance for the coloring online. So see, I want to make sure that uh, the rights, uh, I don't want to infringe on anybody's rights. It's a beautiful um, video. I enjoyed it very much. And I hope they don't mind. It's company Argos. Okay, so I'm going to end it right there. Let me see if I can find my display. There it is. Yay, I ended it in time. Okay, I don't know what you guys thought. Um, I was very touched. This is not my first time seeing it. I had already seen it once, and it was very moving for me. Um, a, and, you know, I am so sorry, but some of the things that happened... Uh, touch me so deeply um, as a human and you know pretty soon people are going to start taking bets <laughs> as to if I'm going to cry during a video because it seems like so many things uh, touch my heart that um, yeah, I'm embarrassed to cry and I wish I could take it out but I don't want to interrupt the video and I am inconsequential when it comes to this. Um, it embarrasses me, but I have no control over it. It's beyond my control, and I'm so sorry. But um, I do want to share. I want everybody to know about AMLO because he's, I think, the hope for this world right now because hopefully other um, leaders will take and learn and see what's possible when, when you take corruption out of the, out of the game, when you do what's right for humanity. Um, anything is possible, uh, and and Amlo is proving it. Um, he uh, is uh, showing the world what you can do when you do the right thing, and. Uh, I'm letting you see my process. I'm using OBS uh, um, to do the, you know, the correction. Um, but anyway, um, I, I do want you to know that that um, this is something I love. I love to translate. Um, and basically, you know, I like translating anyway, but this really moves me. It, it really moves my heart and... Um, you can tell that that it is heartfelt, and uh, and I am so proud of this um, Mexican president. Um, I've never been into politics. I'm, I'm I am I studied with Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't even really 
um, do anything political. But this, I believe, is a movement of, um, you know, people being good to people and, you know, I know that, that this world will never be, never be perfect, um, but I think that, that people can have it a little bit better. I mean, more people can have it a little bit better. Enough for the rich people. They're already having it pretty damn good. Um, and I, you know, I don't live, I don't, I don't have a, um, financial crisis in my life, but I know, I know what it's like and I see it and, and it breaks my heart, you know, and, and it warms my heart when I see somebody helping the needy and, um, you know, uh, doing the right thing for people. It's a beautiful thing. And, uh, and I'm, if I can contribute in any way to making other people's lives better, I am very willing to do it. And I thought, you know, when I was looking for AMLO, um, I couldn't find it. And I was like, who is this AMLO guy? And I can't believe that the news media is not letting the people know. I, I, it's ridiculous. The, the, the newspapers, the, the radio, even in Mexico, because it's owned by the corrupt political people that are still trying to get back into power and trying to get a hold of the money again in the country again. But AMLO is taking care of that. He's, you know, putting the bases in place so that if, um, it, if anything, when he's out of power, and he's only going to do it for six years, and he signed a document today, because, you know, they, they're afraid, oh, how long is he going to be in power that people aren't going to want to let him to leave, uh, or to leave the the position of president. Um, and, he, and they don't. They don't want him to go out. Uh, but he wants to pass this new law where, um, with I think halfway through the term, or every two years, something like that, that uh, they can decide whether they want a president to stay in term. That way, if they get a bad president who's doing bad things, they can oust, oust him within two or three years. So like, you know, when they get a wind of some kind of corruption, they can oust him. But, you know, I guess they're having problems with the other party signing, you know, for that because they wouldn't like that. But anyway, so there's a lot of... Um, interesting things happening a lot of dynamics and um oh man i i can't get enough of it you know that i i translate every day so unfortunately you know they're very long sometimes like an hour sometimes two hours um but i translate and so i started around um may i think i did some a little bit in march and then a little in may and then in June, I did a lot, and then I got hurt. And then also, I was like losing faith. I got nobody's interested. I only had a hundred subscribers after a month of doing it every day. And I thought, oh, I don't know, nobody's even really interested. But then I thought, well, but I have to do it because there's a few that are interested. You know, it, it's like for those, for the ones that care, I'm willing to do it. And, uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, I have a shoulder injury, and so I'm supposed to be getting surgery, and so I'm off work right now. And I say fortunately because I'm off work and I can do it, you know, pay more attention. So I'm, that's why I'm doing a lot right now, because when I'm working, it'll be quite difficult to, uh, to you know, come after work and, uh, and uh, do this. Uh, you know, after working sometimes 16 hours and there's only eight hours uh, left for sleep and doing whatever you got to do at home. And, you know, we I work as a nurse in a prison. And so when we get forced over, that means, you know, there's not a lot of time for rest or anything else. So, you know, this sometimes takes me two to three hours, you know, with the uh, editing. And, and uh, most of the time I do very little editing, but I prepare, make sure that the sound is good and all that because I've had a few times that the sound wasn't so good or they were too loud or I was too quiet or whatever. So I test it. Um, but um, 
I I just I I just want you to know it's a labor of love, and um, and you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention to what's happening because hopefully I don't know where you might be in the world. Um, I know that in my part of the world I'd like a little uh, more going towards the people instead of the rich people, but um, you know. Uh, they say the U.S. is the land of opportunity, but it seems to be that the uh, opportunities are getting less and less. Education is mm, expensive, and a lot of people can't afford it. Uh, food's gotten more expensive. Gas is extremely expensive. Um, there's poverty. There's there's people living on the streets. Um, the 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 amount that the elderly get here to live on, I think it's like, I know I know there's some people that are getting 500, 600, 700 a month to live on. That's unrealistic. And that money, they keep raising the age so that the elderly can't afford to survive. And they limit them. If you get a job, they take away your money, so there's no benefit for them getting a like trying to get a little side job, they're like limiting them to live in dire poverty. I'm talking about our elderly. And and uh, Amla was saying that Fox said that instead of giving money to the elderly, they should make them go back to work. Can you imagine after working all their lives, now the elderly should go back to work? But, of course, he was stealing all the money. He was getting it all for free, and he gave himself, like, this multi-million dollar uh, allowance in retirement, which was taken away. Thank goodness. Um, all the presidents gave themselves, like, five million dollars a month or something like that. <laughs> something crazy. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, just so you know, there was severe corruption in Mexico. Severe uh, unbelievable amount and they were letting uh, companies come in and uh, there was a lot of trickery I mean they they bought the refineries and then basically closed them down so that Mexico would have to um, uh, buy the gasoline so they they take the petroleum and then they would or the petro and then they would send it to the US where they actually made the refineries that they were supposed to make in Mexico. And so they basically closed down the refineries. I think there was like one or two left. Um, and then they forced the Mexican people to buy it from the American people at an elevated price. And so Amlo says, hey, that's like us growing oranges, giving somebody else the oranges. They make the juice and then sell it back to us. He goes, that's ridiculous. So that's why he's trying to make Mexico self-sufficient uh, when it comes to the um, gas. So uh, he's uh, rebuilding uh, uh, several of the refineries. Um, there, and they said there was no more oil, and there's quite a few more places that they found oil, and they're putting new um, drilling. They're drilling new ones, and he also uh, does not allow fracking. He says fracking would make it a lot easier. He goes but it's bad for the environment. So that's the other thing. He's environmentally conscious, um, you know, about, you know, what, what is good for, for the uh, environment because he wants to make sure that there's an environment left for the future generation. And, you know, another thing he did was he put the schools, um, uh, so he's giving money for schools and all these different areas and they're making new schools and hospitals. But in the schools, what he did is he made it that every time uh, there's going to be like like a committee made to control the funds that are given to the uh, schools, and it has to be comprised of the educators and uh, the parents of children that are actually in school, because they want to make sure that you have uh, a vested interest, shall I say, that your interest is that your children have what they need and so that they won't be stealing the money plus the the whole committee makes each other accountable so that there won't be the secret stealing of money you know the money is accounted for and it is uh, used for the purpose that it's intended just like today uh, 
there was a piece of large piece of land uh, they said the biggest and probably the most expensive that was not sold at the auction when they were selling the land that had been um, you know the real estate that had been confiscated from uh, I don't know either a white collar crime or drug lords or whatever method but um, uh, people that were in government that had bought themselves all these properties using the government money. So they basically took all those properties back and they auctioned them. And a lot of them were really nice properties. Um, and, you know, people, because they knew the money was going to benefit the p most impoverished, they actually paid above asking price because they wanted to help. They want these rich people that that were interested in helping Mexico they bought a lot of things at a, a higher, in, including the cars. When he sold the cars, um, they bought it at a higher uh, amount than than what they were actually valued at, which is unbelievable. That's wonderful. I, I'm actually very proud of whoever it was that did, did that. Um, also, um, so anyway, so they're also building uh, hospitals. And another thing that happened uh, during that period of neoliberalism was that they uh, privatized education. So these companies were now, instead of it being a right, like in the uh, Constitution, for people to have um, their uh, education, up, uh, even up to higher levels, um, they were making people pay. And most people didn't even have the money to eat, much less to pay for education. So now he's giving grants to the students or people that have um, uh, age, uh, students that are of age, you know, to go to s different uh, levels of school. Uh, they'll be getting grants so that while they're going to school, which is now free, uh, they will have money to be able to feed themselves, get dressed, get whatever it is, ancillary materials they need. Uh, so there's going to be a fund for those people, and there a lot of them are already getting it. And they're um, uh, making new books that are going to teach uh, good things like ethics and, and all that stuff that was not being taught and took out all that neoliberal baloney <laughs> that was messing up the country. Uh, so they're getting new books, and they'll be uh, made in time you know, for the new year to begin. Uh, so they're working on that. Uh, what else? Um, oh, and the other thing that happened was they were making it kind of like a lottery uh, type situation where only, say, maybe a thousand out of 10,000 applicants would get to go to college uh, because they didn't, first of all, didn't make enough schools. And the other thing was, um, you know, those, the ones that they were going to give grants to. Um, you know, they couldn't, they didn't want to spend too much money on that. So then consequently, they have no, uh, doctors and nurses are not enough. So now they, uh, the ones that they have, they don't want to go live in the, uh, work in the rural areas. So the other thing he did was he made them, uh, they're going to get paid more money if they go work in the rural areas as an incentive. Um, what else? Oh, there's so many things. You really need to, um, if you get the opportunity, um, and your English uh, speaking, watch my channel, Amlovision, uh, for uh, translated uh, information that has to do with Amlo's uh, vision. And the reason I named this channel Amlovision was because I, w I knew that I wanted people to see him, and I, I knew that the television was not telling people about him. And, uh, and I wanted people to know by the name that they would be able to see AMLO uh, or about AMLO. So this channel basically deals with anything related to AMLO in any way. And basically everything is related. You know, like when I'm, I'm going to be doing a video regarding uh, uh, people, homeless people. And I do bring that back to AMLO because... He's dealing with that in Mexico. He's uh, helping the very impoverished, which are the homeless, for one thing, you know. Um, and so, basically, it, just about any topic I can think of that has to do with poverty or, you know, money or education or art, anything, 
is something that uh, is fundamental, that is, that is human rights, that is beauty, that is heartfelt, is something that I could relate back to Am AMLO. So, and also if I see a channel that is talking about something that I consider um, to be very important, and sometimes I just don't have enough time, there's so many of them, um, but um, I kind of select one or another, and I'm worried sometimes that they might be upset if I translate because, you know, infringement of rights or something, and I'm not trying to do that. I just want to let their material be shared uh, with the um, English-speaking people. Just like um, Selena, you know, uh, when she was um, singing in Spanish, and then she started singing in English, you know, it was what they called, um, like, oh, God, what was the word they used? It was something where where it would crossover. So there was a crossover. So not only would you be with the uh, Spanish speaking public, now you were going to cross over to the English uh, speaking audience. And, uh, and you know, English is one of the uh, strongest or, you know, most important languages in the world right now where most people communicate either English or Spanish. Um, I know that it's taught even in India and probably Japan and China. I don't know if they do it as a second language, but I know that they'll know one or the other, either Spanish or English for the most part, and that way it's shared with more people in the world. And besides, um, they could get a translator yeah, pretty much for any of these languages, so um, I, I encourage anybody else in any other language to translate as well, um, and I'd be happy to show them on my channel or attach them so that, so that they'll know to come here and get it. So if you're interested in translating in another language, oh man, that'd be awesome because we need to share it with the world. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And I hope I didn't make this too long. And besides, you can always cut it off at where the end of his movie is anyway. This is just at the end. Have a great day. Bye now.